Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to analyze the tactical elements behind Yuri Tielemans to determine whether the Belgian international would be a significant upgrade to Arsenal's midfield. So in today's video, first we're going to analyze Tielemans' role at Leicester, and then we'll break down his strengths and weaknesses to see how he would fit in at Arsenal. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, first we're going to analyze Tielemans' role at Leicester City. And one of the key factors to his success in that midfield is that he could play in various positions. You could have him playing as a sole pivot, he could play in a two man midfield in a double pivot or he could play as a shuttler in a midfield three and at times if you want to be a bit brave he could play just in behind the striker as an additional midfielder in the number 10 role what we've seen this past season from Leicester City is that he has played on the right-hand side in the shuttler role, but he also has played as a single pivot when indeed he went out for injury towards the end of the season. One of the issues that Arsenal have encountered in terms of their build-up is that their midfield often gets closed out of the game as they do situate themselves in the center of the pitch and that allows the other side to shape themselves in a pentagonal or hexagonal shape to ensure that passes can't get played into them. That put heavy emphasis on gap Gabriel and White to build attacks from the center back position and what we see from Tielemans is that he's willing to make lateral movements towards the outside of the opposing side's forwards to get on the ball to help progress his side's play. If that's not the case he'll drop off in towards the half spaces somewhat like we see from Granite Xhaka on the left hand side and he'll look to get on the ball to push the fullback forward and then it allows the advanced wide player to tuck into central areas. If that isn't the case you could see the fullback moving in towards the half space and then that would allow a passing outlet for Tielemans to get on the ball and play it out to the wide player hugging the touchline. With that being said, Tielemans' lateral movement and his willingness to find space to get on the ball makes him an additional passing outlet. He's also a reliable passer in those zones and frankly it decreases the emphasis on the center backs to build attacks. However, there are pros and cons of Tielemans receiving the ball in these deeper zones. One could be the fact that if he does have enough time, he's capable of bypassing the first phase of the opposing side's press. In this example, you see Tielemans looking for the ball in his own third. And when he does receive it from his fullback, that's when you see Pellegrini stepping to apply pressure. When Tielemans receives the ball, you can see that he checks his shoulder before Pellegrini gets to him. And that gives him enough time to make his decision on what he wants to do next. Here you can see that he looks to take a first touch and dribble beyond Pellegrini due to his positioning and you can see that Pellegrini is not going to get towards him and that's all down to checking his shoulder. As Tielemann beats Pellegrini who falls to the ground he locates Madison dropping into his own third and from there he could find a passing outlet in towards his attacking midfielder and that's going to help Leicester City progress their play as you can see that the right back is now looking to push forward. Tielemans plays the ball beyond Abraham and from there Leicester City are capable of breaking. If we look to another example this time it's Tielemans looking to receive the ball facing his own penalty area and you can see that pressure is being instantly applied in behind him when he receives the ball. However, when that pass is played, Tielemans also locates pressure towards his left as he checks his shoulder and that's important because that's the pressure that comes in first. You can see that now because Tielemans checked his shoulder, he has to hold off that pressure and the initial opposing player doesn't step. But the problem that Tielemans has is that pressure is so tight and now he's forced to hold off his marker and that's where it looks like he's about to lose possession of the ball. However, Tielemans does well to use his upper body strength to hold off that initial pressure, and while he does see two opposing players providing help pressure, he can now slide the ball out towards the wide area, and he does that well to bypass two of those players, and ultimately he takes out four of them to help Leicester City progress their play. But there have been scenarios where Tielemans has received the ball in his own third, and played a loose pass, or took too much time on the ball to make a decision with what he wanted to do with it, and that resulted in the opposing side winning possession in that dangerous zone and then breaking in transition to place themselves in a legitimate goal scoring position. And then around the halfway circle against Watford it's another loose Tielemans pass that's played into the path of the Watford striker and as that play develops what you end up seeing is that he's able to step into the loose pass that Tielemans makes and watch how that play develops shortly after. Tielemans now doesn't have the pace to cover four center backs as the Watford striker breaks towards them and you can see that there's a runner towards Tielemans right that's looking to break forward to help the attack. Tielemans follows the Watford striker and leaves the runner free and from there he's able to slide the ball across Tielemans and Fofana to play in his teammate who's breaking from midfield.
field. And from here, he receives the ball at the edge of the box. And all Tielemans could do from there is look to shift over. And he makes a lunging tackle. And ultimately, that player is able to get a shot on goal that's pushed over for a corner. And then lastly, you could see Tielemans looking to receive a square ball in his own third, but he's unaware of the pressure that's about to be applied just in behind him. When he receives the ball, he looks to play a first-time pass in towards the center back, but he ends up playing the ball in towards the pressure just in behind him. That ultimately results in a giveaway, and it leads to a transitional attack with this Leicester City center backs out of position. If you focus on Tielemans, he's also placed in a position where he can't get back to cover for them, and that results in a break where a runner's being played in towards right half space and while Tielemans does look to get across he's unable to do so and the pass is played in towards right half space with Johnny Evans looking to cover the six yard box but from Tielemans's mistake that results in a goal. The same could be said about Tielemans's requirement to protect the back four. While he can do a very good job of breaking up play out in the wider areas when he's protecting his teammates there have been situations where he has done a very good job specifically in the middle third of breaking up transitional attacks and ensuring that his back line wasn't bypassed in transition but on the flip side what we also see from Tielemans is that when he goes up against swifter attacking players when the opposing side breaks in his own half he struggles to deal with their threats as they break quickly and carry the ball from their half in towards the middle third and that's where you often see Tielemans being bypassed in transition therefore it shouldn't be a surprise that in the middle third and his own third when Tielemans goes up against competent dribblers, he struggles to slow them down and they often have an easy time of taking the ball, running at him, and then bypassing his initial tackle to progress their play. However, under Mikel Arteta's system, what we've witnessed is that Arsenal often play in a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 on a consistent basis, and what you end up seeing is that in their attacking structure, they often shift into more of a 3-2-5 or a 4-1-5. This shouldn't really bother Tielemans and he should adapt quickly because he has played this role for Leicester City and whether it be on the left or the right hand side with many assuming it will be on the left as he should be a replacement for Granit Xhaka, Tielemans is capable of operating in the role that is expected of him. As you've seen he can drop off into the half spaces to allow the wide fullbacks to push forward into advanced positions or to allow the wide player to receive more space on the touchline while the fullback moves into the half space. And from there, that's where you end up seeing Tielemans operating as more of a creator, and he does offer protection for the fullbacks. One of his more patented moves is that when he does receive the ball in the half space, he's looking for the wide players to make runs in behind the opposing side's fullback or wingback, and he often looks to clip balls in towards the half space to get his teammates into legitimate goal scoring positions where they could create or serve as a goal scoring option. When Tielemans is operating in that middle third, he gives you a bit of everything. When he gets the ball in those deeper positions, if there's no pressure on him, he's capable of carrying the ball forward and then then progressing the play by playing penetrative passes to his wide players that are looking to tuck in centrally between the lines, or he'll look to play it out into the wider positions for the fullbacks pushing forward. In this example, you witness Tielemans looking to receive the ball in the halfway circle, and a center back bypasses two PSV players for him to receive the ball. When Tielemans receives the ball in the half turn, you can see that, that pressure is being instantly applied in from behind. And what he does so well here again is that he holds off that pressure with his upper body strength, and he locates all bright and shifting central and Ian Nacho dropping into a pocket of space between the lines. Tielemans does well to hold off that pressure and he ends up splitting two PSV players for Hianacho to receive the ball in that pocket of space and that helps Leicester City progress their play. With that being said, when he plays in that right shuttler role, he often looks to receive the ball in pockets of space between the midfield bank and from there he looks to receive the ball in that space and then he'll look for his attacking teammates in those wider areas in the final third. If you need him to push a bit higher to break up play in that midfield zone, he does have good anticipation of cutting out passes and he could step forward to apply pressure if his team looks to push higher up the pitch. And from there, he could serve as an outlet to win possession. You do worry about his mobility because he can be bypassed easily. So for the most part, he does very well to anticipate passes in that midfield zone and then step into them to break up play and help progress the transitional attack. As stated earlier, a lot of the times when Tielemans does break up play, it's often in transition. But it is good to know that he is capable of breaking up play if required. In this example, 
but Watford's looking to break forward in transition with Sissoko and focus on Telemann's positioning as he looks to cut off that attack. He gives Sissoko a free outlet in towards the center of the pitch, and Sissoko does well to square the ball in towards his teammate's path, but the pass is slightly a bit behind him, and that gives Telemann's recovery time to shift towards his right, and that's where he's able to step in to make a challenge, and that helps Leicester City halt the transitional attack. From there, Telemans carries the ball in towards the halfway circle, and he could slide the ball across the breaking Watford players to help progress Leicester's play. Against Norwich, you could see Madison and Amarte being bypassed in transition as the ball falls to Puki, but focus on Telemans' positioning. When Puki looks to carry the ball in towards the Leicester City half, Telemans has already shifted over to provide recover pressure, and when Puki looks to bypass him, it's Telemans who steps in with his left foot to make a challenge, and he helps halt the Norwich counterattack. Another key element to Telemans' game that often goes unnoticed is his ability to win aerial duels in the middle third or the final third, and at times he can be marked, or even when he's just free in that zone, when the opposing side plays long balls or his teammates play long balls in towards that area, he's capable of winning the aerial duel and nodding the ball in towards his teammates to help them progress the play into legitimate goal scoring areas. In this example, you could see that Schmeichel's looking to play a long ball in towards the middle third as pressure is being applied, and you could see that the ball's falling into the path of Telemans, who has tight pressure just in behind him, but he doesn't panic, and although there are two Everton players within close proximity, he steps high to nod the ball in towards the path of Castagna, and from there, the right back is slide the ball back into the path of Telemans, and what ends up happening there is that he's able to control the ball freely, he separates himself from all of the Everton pressure, and that's where he's able to look towards his left and play the ball in towards an attacking player to help progress their play. In terms of Arsenal or Leicester City shifting into a 4-1-5, there are times where you need the shuttlers to make vertical runs, and that's where you end up witnessing Telemans making those runs in towards the wide areas in the channels to help progress the play, but he's also capable of running off his markers into the final third to get himself into legitimate goal scoring positions to set himself up for a goal or to help tee up his teammates. In this example, focus on Evans carrying the ball freely towards the Watford's half and focus on Telemans positioning at the right corner. As Evans carries the ball freely forward, you can see that Telemans is prepared to run off his marker in towards the Watford third, but you can also see that his marker isn't tracking his movement and that now puts emphasis on one of the center backs to pick up Telemans' run. Evans ends up playing a long ball into the path of Telemans who makes a run in between two Watford defenders, and you can see that Telemans is now the most advanced Leicester City attacker. What ends up happening here is that Cathcart and his fullback end up making an error and Cathcart runs into him as he nods the ball upwards, and Telemans' persistence to track that play results in him receiving the ball freely in the penalty area with now the keeper forced to come off his line, and what Telemans does well here is rather than taking a shot, he acknowledges Madison is also breaking free in towards the penalty area, and he pokes the ball across the goalkeeper in towards his teammate, which places Madison in a legitimate goal scoring position to level the game. And then in terms of Telemans' impact in the final third, he operates in two different scenarios where he can receive the ball in tight spaces in and around the opposing side's box and then playing his teammates into legitimate goal scoring positions. Here, focus on Telemans' positioning between the lines at the edge of the box, and he receives the ball in tight space, and you can see that two center backs are stepping instantly towards him. He does well to hold off their pressure with his upper body strength, and from there he's looking to slide the ball in towards left half space to play in a teammate into an attacking position to take a shot on goal or create. From there, the ball falls into the path of his striker, and that's where you see him looking to get a shot on goal, and that's all due to Telemans' close control. Or when he receives the ball ahead of the opposing side's defense, he can squeeze passes in towards the half spaces for onrushing runners, or look to playing teammates for first-time effort in and around the penalty area. But outside of scoring screamers from long distances or penalties, what you end up seeing from Telemans is that there are three points of attack that he could harm your back line. One would be those looping balls from those inside right or left positions over the top or in towards his teammates at the back post. The other point of attack would be him running off his opposing marker in that midfield zone to help break in transition and make late runs in towards the penalty area to finish off a 
attacks. And then the third point of attack would be him simply running off his marker again, but serving as the creator and playing in his teammates into spaces where they're making runs off the last shoulder to get themselves into legitimate shooting positions or to break 1v1 against the opposing side's keeper. So as you could see, Tielemans' impact in the first phase of the buildup in the middle third would solve an issue that Arsenal encountered this season. And whilst he may not be deemed as a legitimate world-class player, his skill set can still play a key role in pushing Arsenal back into the top four.